Okay, so now we have some spotlights. Um, so three minutes for each spotlight. I'll be down there showing you uh, signs one with one minute. Uh, so first spotlight is uh, Andrew. Morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Andrew. I'm Ben. So first of all, thanks a lot to my collaborators, uh, Baharuan, Mesa Holiman, Joachim Buman, and Eric Swarson. So what we are working on? So we are optimizing a class of non convex functions, but they have a very nice structure, which is called the continuous modularity. So this structure appears uh, in many practical applications. First of all, we give a thorough uh, characterization of this class of functions. So, Look at this figure. So it, it, it uh, visualizes uh, two simple submodular continuous functions. So the red one is the softmax extension, and the blue one is the multilinear extension. Interestingly, the class of submodular function uh, contains a subset of the convex function and the concave functions. Um, and also, the characterization can be put in correspondence with the uh, with that of convex functions, which is summarized in this table. So the zeros of the property gives the definition. So it says for any two vectors x and y, so fx plus fy is greatly equal fx join y plus fx meet y. So x join y is simply the coordinate wise maximum of the two vectors, and x meet y is the coordinate wise minimum. So it can be easily proved that. Uh, it is equivalent to the second order condition, which says all of the off diagonal ent entries of the Hessian of the Hessian matrix uh, is non positive. We propose the weak DR property, which can be interpreted as a first order condition. And it also gives a unified characterization for the sum modularity of all the set function, uh, integer lattice function, and continuous functions. We then study two important problem settings. We give the hardness result for them. So both of them are AP hard problems. So the first one is to maximize the monotone DR sum order function subject to a down closed convex set. So for, for this problem, we uh, presented the Frank Wolfe variant with adaptive statistics. Uh, it gives a y minus one over e guarantee with sublinear convergence grid. And the second one is to maximize the non-monotone submodular function over the box constraint. So for this one, the double gradient algorithm, so which is essentially the coordinate ascent but maintaining two solutions, it gives a one-third approximation guarantee. So these two algorithms is shown to outperform the baseline in all of the applications. So for more details, you are very welcome to our posters. Thanks a lot for your attention. Okay. Morning, everyone. I'm Leo from the University of Oxford. And uh, today I would like to talk to you about uh, deep learning optimization. And more specifically, I would like to discuss the learning of a specific class of convolutional neural networks, which we can call piecewise linear CNNs or PLCNN. So first I will define what a PLCNN is, and in a second time I will talk about how to optimize this. So a PLCNN is simply a CNN with nonlinear activation for piecewise linear and with an SVM loss layer at the end. So it's worthwhile at this point to note that uh, piecewise nonlinear activations include a large class of activations including values, uh, max out, max pooling, and a lot of their variants. So on this slide you can see an example of a PLCNN architecture. So we have a series of convolutional layers supported by a fully connected layer and as we have lost, and let's say that we have value activations with maybe a few max pooling activations in these. So let's look at the learning objective function. So the, for input xi, the network output a feature vector 
file of text size W, which is fed to the SVM loss layer. Then the SVM loss layer is comprised of uh, L2 regularization parts and the hinge loss parts, which penalizes the maximum margin violations. So if we fix the feature vector phi, then this is a standard SVM problem, so this is complex. But now let's look at the optimization of a hidden linear layer, keeping everything else fixed. Then this is not convex, but the key observation is that it's actually different of convex. And one, one, of, one way of, of seeing that is that the transformations are either linear at linear layers or piecewise linear at, uh, at nonlinear activation layers. So we have a, a piecewise linear function in the hinge loss and in L2 regularization. And more interestingly, we can look at uh, an explicit difference of decomposition of the objective function. And what we get out of this is that we actually find that this is the general form of the latent SVM problem. And there is a very natural interpretation of the, of the hidden variables, which are which piece of the piecewise linear activations we are at. So this is what the hidden uh, latent variables represent. And so because we have this, this latent SVM problem, we can apply the whole literature uh, about how we can solve this. And uh, for example, we chose in this work to use the concave convex procedure as well uh, in conjunction with the block coordinate front block algorithm, which allows us in particular to guarantee a monotonical decrease in the objective function. So thank you for your attention and uh, this pop I also. Press the right arrow. <laughs> um, hello. So, um, in this work, we study the optimization of conductive uh, functions with an additional cubic linearization scale. And then, when the matrix scale A has negative eigenvalue, this problem is not complex. So, here we're showing an example in two dimensions, and you can see that this particular function has no less than five critical points. One of them is a maximum, two of them are southern points, and two of them are local minima. And one of the local minima is actually uh, far from the uh, optimal value. So for this particular value, it's not even true that every local minimum is a global minimum. Still, we want to know what we can do with the ideal descent for this particular value. And that's is quite surprising. If you start at the origin, you always get to the global minimum. To a local minimum, but to a global minimum. Um, so, you know, Avosto will have a picture proof of that, so everyone that will come to Avosto can see what this is for. Our main result, however, is a rate of convergence to the global minimum. So, what we show is that for every epsilon, um, the value of the function at time t will be below the minimum value plus epsilon. After some time, and we identify two regimes of convergence, one of them is a sublinear convergence regime, and the other one is a linear convergence regime. Um, and this constant limit is enough to hide the most logarithmic dependence on the problem dimension when we use a very simple optimization argument. Uh, to illustrate what these rates of convergence mean, we can draw this type of graph, where the y-axis is basically the time, and the x-axis is just the inverse of the relative error um, at that time. So whenever we done the gradient descent, basically we'll get a plot of this graph, and as t grows, one of the epsilon should also go because our error is close to zero. And our first guaranteed one that goes as one of epsilon basically says that we're all, always below the black curve. And similarly, the linear convergence regime says that we're always below the blue curve. And you see that when uh, little c is uh, much smaller than large c, as in in uh, this case, both of these bounds are actually meaningful, and here we basically drain a lot of experiments with a lot of different functions, and this sort of shaded plot shows all the experiment, so you can see that our bounds fall, and they are also uh, quite sharp, and we actually even have a third regime that depends on the eigenvalue of A, uh, that sort of describes what's going on in the middle. So, um, we are welcome to our poster, and then we can discuss it.
Hello, uh, I'm Manuel Zopetakis uh, from my team, yeah, and this is a joint work with uh, Kostas Nostalakis and Christos Thomas. So, in our setting, uh, consider a uh, probability distribution that depends on the set of uh, parameters, and uh, we get some strong distribution, and we want to recover the parameters. Uh, but uh, we don't get to see to observe uh, all the samples, there is an observable part and the non-observable part. Okay, so there are just some uh, latent variables. Okay, uh, in order to recover the parameters, uh, the most natural thing to do is to find the set of parameters that maximizes the log uh, likelihood function. And uh, this is an MPCAR problem in general. Uh, but, so, but there is an algorithm, but we first proposed in 1977, uh, the celebrated expectation maximization algorithm that is the only known generic algorithm in order to find the maximum likelihood estimation that's made. Okay, and uh, in order to illustrate the importance of this algorithm, we just uh, can see the citations of uh, the, this first article. It's about uh, 45,000, and uh, this, uh, this makes uh, the first uh, paper body M one of the top. Uh, Paper uh, but uh, despite the importance of EM, three very basic questions are have not uh, there's no answer to these three very basic questions. Uh, does actually converges if it converges converges to the correct solution, and uh, even if it converges to the correct solution, what's the running time? How many steps it takes? Okay, uh, we prove uh, for a very this, so these questions are open even for a very special cases, for very yeah, paradigmatic uh, applications of the end, like uh, uh, mixtures of the oceans, and we're the first to prove uh, global convergence guarantees uh, with uh, group geometric convergence, and uh, we also give explicit convergence rates, and uh, this uh, independent work of Zuzu and Maleki in this NIPS this year uh, proves again the same guarantees without the explicit rate, but it leads to more general problem. And a very straightforward application to very natural cases uh, leads to the title of the article that is uh, that 10 steps suffice. They come to our poster for more things. Uh, kernel matrix 
And uh, the analysis is going to consist of two components. The first component is getting this uh, uh, ideal spectral decay of this uh, ideal color matrix. And the second part is actually using some kind of use statistics about the, um, um, this uh, difference between this eigen, uh, this uh, ideal spectrum and the actual spectrum you get from the real data. So uh, essentially, uh, we have identified some condition called diversity uh, between these weights in the units. If the stationary point corresponding to a set of weights which are highly diverse, then you can actually say something about the generalization of the units. If you're interested, please come to the uh, poster. Thank you. Solutions and we uh, show we, we 
we also saw that the Monte Carlo estimate of these modifiers can be quite inefficient in terms of optimization. So uh, in this paper, we uh, propose a particular generalized noisy modifiers to be able to that give, gave us like uh, good results. And in this generalized modifier, for example, we have the operator t sigma, and as the sigma of the t sigma goes, uh, f become you get the original target function f, and as the sigma goes to infinity, you get the identity function. And another property is like this uh, t sigma of f uh, with respect to input should have a gradient defined to be able to back propagate through the network. And uh, we also use the noisy version of the modifier, which in our pre pre previous work that we also observed that uh, we got that by using the noisy version, we, we also get some better generalization as well. And in this paper, we uh, propose a particular algorithm for neural networks to be able to optimize the uh, better. And we also show the long run, like co coalition neural networks, sci fi time, and LSI, better results than other techniques or competitive results for residual networks. Thanks. Previously, we can uh, only handle the case when AI is off-local, 
uh, meaning and which implies that NLP needs to be less than D. And the proof techniques is using uh, the categorized formula from the random field and geometry um, plus uh, random matrix theory. Um, so if you're interested, please come to our post text.